Hello everyone, in this video I wanted to go over really about positioning and really in particular the misconceptions around it um, in particular and how to really set it up and identify and understand it all uh, in a whole. So let's get into it to begin with. In the center here you can see I've got a Bybit chart, um, Bybit beats USDT just so you can understand the exact things we're going to be talking about uh, set to USD. So everything you're going to be seeing is USD value. Now if we add Delta on, okay, which is a D bars here, you're going to see at the bottom here, it's going to be telling you what's going on within each individual candle. Note that on footprint charts, you're seeing market orders, okay? So when when we just look at it in plain view, you go, there's a lot of market selling coming in here because the D bars, which is the delta between the buyers and sellers in that candle market, is negative, meaning there's more market sales coming in within this candle. Does that mean that there's a lot of market sell, or new market sales happening? No. So when someone just randomly looks at this and goes, look, delta's increasing, for example, or if you add the CVD line on, visible range for example uh, yes we'll do that if you add that on for example and then you look at the chart and go look there's a lot of longs happening here for example new longs that doesn't actually tell you the full picture that's a really big misconception within this industry I think in my opinion for people that are learning this to not just go with Delta and say look there's a lot of market bias happening here that means everyone's getting long um, that's not necessarily the case um, if we look at open interest which is actually what you really want to be focused on, that will actually tell you the whole picture in, in reality, as close as to uh, and as accurately as possible as you can get. So if we just, you know, I'm going to tidy this up for you here. What you want to be doing is pairing price action with open interest and delta, all the three together to actually get a really good idea of what positioning is going on, short squeezes, long squeezes, that type of thing I'm going to cover now. Um, so if we just pick apart, for example, the same candle, that's a really good example of this, Look at the delta. The delta is increasing, and you and you might be thinking there's new longs coming in. That's not actually the case. Uh, if you look at the open interest, it's decreasing, meaning money money is exiting the market. Okay, and when you look at that, that actually means that there's short closing because when you close a short, you're actually market buying. Okay, on the opposing side, so there's actually not new positions coming in here to be trapped, which is really important to understand now. Without just looking at the delta, you wouldn't have understood that. And by the way, this is just Bybit BTC USDT. I'm going to show you in a minute how to aggregate it and use Binance etc. as well to really get a good, a better picture even. Um, so yeah, and you can see here, open interest increasing means there's money coming into the market. Uh, the same way on the opposing side, when you see negative delta and open interest decreasing, that actually means that market longs are closing. When you're in a long, you close that position, you're now market shorting into the market, and that will display via the footprint chart as well. So don't just blindly follow the delta and say, look, you know, delta's, delta plus price equals positioning. That's not the scenario at all. Um, because you need to have delta plus price plus, plus open interest uh, to actually get a good understanding of this. What you want to see is open interest increasing in order to actually see new positions entering the market. Anything with it decreasing means that positions exiting the market. Okay, a um, few more things to cover here. So what you've understood now is we're looking at it on a per candle basis. Open interest increasing, uh, delta positive, this candle has new longs in it. Okay, now that's all well and good but if you want to dive deeper what you can really do here is go to open interest based and change the cluster type okay to open interest created versus remove for example okay and i'm going to show you as well what i would actually recommend you set your settings to and i would recommend you to set the text type to delta okay so now what we have here are two different things the the, the cluster and the text type are completely separate, but this is going to give you the most accurate representation of positioning that is really possible. Um, so basically what you're going to see here is the, del the text type is delta, meaning the difference between buys and sells on a per price basis, per tick basis, okay? So up here, 200 ticks. Per 200 ticks here, you're seeing the delta of that, meaning between the difference between the buys and sells, there's more buying going on here. And now focus on the cluster itself, you can actually understand that the open interest is increasing at this level. Okay, this is so basically this cluster is showing you open interest created versus removed. So that's just telling me specifically that there's open interest being added at this level when there's more market buys going on. Now I'm categorically going this specific cluster here is mainly new longs opening, right? So within this cluster, that's, I've, I've drilled it down really in particular there. Okay, um, you can also just, if you want to go to here, use net calculations so you can only just see like the difference between the two essentially um, you can leave that off if you want so if we go back up to here so you can get a good understanding of this look at this candle here look at this price cluster this block here now ne negative net delta so market sales are occurring within this candle more more dominant 
and what are those market sales doing? Well, the open interest has in increased way more within this candle. So actually, this block here is actually new shorts opening. Okay, so. I'm hoping you actually really are getting an understanding of how positioning works here in reference to just the very basic, I don't want to get into the details of it kind of mindset of delta plus price. And that is a really big misconception in this space. Um, so yeah, really dive into those two. The other thing you can do with an XO, by the way, is I'll show you this now. Uh, I go over this all the time and, and I do use it myself. We're looking at BTC buy, uh, buy bit BTC USDT, and obviously you might want to be looking at I don't know Binance on top of this. So we'll add on Binance here, for example, and we're going to sync the price, include volume data, include open interest, data, include rec data, synthetic volume as well. So it's showing in USD values. A primary build chart. Now what you're going to be seeing is the exact same thing, um, but you're actually going to be seeing. Binance's data included in this. So now what we're seeing is Bybit, Binance sync together in a chart footprint wise per price uh, open interest clustering and you know everything's going to be aggregated essentially and you can really separate it as well. Um, if you look especially down here at the open interest um, indicator you have two lines going on here and these two lines you can check it in the settings it's going to be different between Bybit and Binance okay um, and you can you know select whatever you want and you can adjust this by the way as you need. Um, so you can add multiple pairs on. Generally, you might want to be having, I don't like to have certain pairs because it might skew the open interest results in my opinion. Um, so, you know, take that as you will, but you know, buy a bit Binance, uh, OKX is good, sometimes bit finesse, but you know, just generally buy a bit Binance and, and you can have as many pairs as you like Coinbase, uh, for the footprint clusters, not the open interest. But yeah, this is how positioning works. So when you're looking at price, you know, you know, you can see here now we've got a much more detailed view, hopefully after, after you've understood all of this. When you're looking at this right and you're going look price is moving down delta is moving down does that mean that this is this move is driven by new shorts no right what it means is you have to look at the open interest and go look open interest is actually decreasing across the two markets at this time when we've got this negative delta which means longs are being squeezed out the market longs are closing not new shorts opening okay so yeah, this is quite a thing I'm quite passionate about because I don't want you to all view it as like a really blanket statement, especially if you actually want to be looking into the weeds of order flow. Don't be just going, you know, like I just said multiple times in this video, delta plus price. Look at open interest. Look at it on a per cluster basis. as well if you're scalping. This is really good because let's say you want to be looking at into your level, for example. Um, I don't want to give an exact example right now, maybe uh, probably down here. But what you would want to see is, for example, uh, you, know, you can see a lot of longs happening here. Oh, well, no, short positions closing. Because, again, keep into account the pri the, cluster, uh, the text type you're seeing here is delta. And then this is actually clusters uh, of the open interest. So you can see that on a per cluster base, like I said. Um, but yeah, what you want to see into your level, for example, you want to see all this negative delta. So, for example, you want to see, you know, tons of negative delta. And actually what you could do is put this on imbalance and then see the imbalance is coming in but then you also want to see you know sell side imbalances and then a really large increases in open interest at those levels so it's the best most accurate way of viewing it i actually don't recommend for everyone that's going to be asking this as well i actually don't recommend you use these the new short sales and you, you can if you want uh, a very simplified version of it but like for the most accurate results for those who you know especially for myself i'm doing this for a living I, I need the most accurate results these are more so estimates based on the open interest, etc. But I really recommend just using the OI created removed because that is extremely, extremely precise. That's what you're getting from the exchanges, etc. One to one data of that. And you're viewing it on a per, per cluster basis, per price cluster basis. So, you know, you can exactly see where people are coming in, where people are exiting. Don't just view it on a really, you know, singular basis of that, that, you know, uh, I, I rambled on enough. If you have any questions, let me know below. Thank you all for watching.